Here's the biggest mistake that I see people make when they're setting up a closet. They use these things, wooden closet rods. It may seem bizarre, but I actually have a really strong opinion on this. I hate wooden closet rods. They don't look good, they don't age well, and they don't even really function that well. There's a far, far better alternative out there. Today, I'm gonna show you what it is and even how to install it. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. So the vastly better option for wooden closet rods is metal closet rods. They're nearly identical products, but they're made out of a far more suitable material. Metal closet rods tend to come in the same thicknesses, one and a quarter inches to one and a half inches, and the same lengths, four feet to eight feet. They usually have chrome, white, or black finishes, and they mount in a fashion very similar to wooden rods. But the similarities end right there, because metal rods are just way more functional than wooden rods. For one, they're much stronger. Metal rods tend to be hollow tubes with a thick, rigid wall. The tube shape itself is naturally very strong. It functions like an arch in architecture. This means that an elongated tube has very little willingness to bend across a span. When they reach their failure point, they'll usually fold like a cardboard tube, but this takes a good amount of weight. They're more than capable of carrying 70 to 90 pounds across a six foot span, which is actually a pretty wide span. Wooden rods, on the other hand, are actually quite flimsy across the span. Wood needs more thickness to be rigid. One and a half inches just doesn't cut it. And while wooden rods typically won't break because wood is sort of elastic, they'll actually start sagging very early on if they're under-supported. I can't count the number of times I've seen this in houses. And strength issues aside, the bigger issue really is functionality. Metal rods are like 10 times more functional than wooden rods just because of their finish. Clothes hangers just glide across metal. Whether the finish is chrome or a ceramic type paint, metal rods are almost frictionless under plastic or metal clothes hangers. So even when you're hauling a huge batch of clothes from side to side, the hangers move with far less effort. Wooden rods have no real way of equaling this. Bare wood definitely doesn't do the trick. And even if you paint them, you can almost never get that textureless finish that comes standard on metal rods. And when it comes down to it, metal rods just aren't that much more expensive. Yes, you may see them double or even triple the price of wooden rods, but the total bill is still fairly cheap. Keep in mind, they'll need no painting or maintenance ever once they're installed. And for like 10 additional bucks, you'll get a product that not only works much better, but also looks infinitely better. Metal rods are just more attractive. They stand out and they instantly make a project look more professional. You can actually heighten the appearance of custom built-ins with metal rods while providing a superior product. And as I said, they're really not any harder to install. So let me show you real quick how it's done. Nearly all of these rods install with a cup bracket system on the side walls. The ends of the rods just sit in the lips of these little cups. And these cups will typically be installed on trim plates on the side walls. I took out a rusty old steel rod for this new install, so I already had these to mount to. But if you wanna see a discussion of how to mount side trim cleats, check out my video on closet built-ins. You can use a very similar method to make closet rod mounting plates. This is vastly superior to using plastic anchors and will last much longer. But assuming you already have plates, the first thing you need to do is measure your span from wall to wall. You may need to bend the tape to do this. You're looking for a surface to surface reading. I go with a measurement about a 16th shy of the total opening. In my case, just under 51 inches. Now, pull this measurement on your metal closet rod and make a mark. Use a rolled up strip of paper with a straight edge to transfer this mark around the circumference of the tube. Then brace or clamp your rod on a stable surface and cut through it with a hacksaw. It takes a little while, but you can actually cut pretty cleanly by checking both sides as you saw. When the scrap falls away, sand the cut end of the rod down just to eliminate burrs. From this point on, all you need is a drill. The little cups have three screw holes on the flange. Just position the closed bracket where you want the rod to sit, far enough out that clothes won't rub against the back wall, and far enough below a shelf that you can hook the hangers in easily. Mark and pre-drill the hole locations, then screw the bracket cup to the wall. Then place the other bracket open side up on the opposite wall, using measurements to position it identically. But otherwise, just insert one end of the rod into the closed cup and lower the free end into the open cup. Spans over five or six feet may require an intermediate support, but these can usually be mounted to a trim plate on the back wall in a very similar fashion. Otherwise, that's how it's done. You've got a closet rod that not only looks better, but works much better as well. I'll link some rods, brackets, and other materials down below, along with some tools seen in the video. So feel free to shop those links, or just look for rods in the shelving section of your local hardware store 
where you can sometimes find them even cheaper. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back soon for more videos coming up and please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.